Good morning, folks, and here we're going to talk about the latest official The Last of Us podcast. And I'm not going to play it for you, but I'm going to talk about quotes that were referenced in a Collider.com blog post. So I thought that would be easier for us to go through. And we've got the likes of uh, Neil Druckmann, Haley Gross, Laura Bailey, Troy Baker, and Ashley Johnson replying. So it's not all of them, but let's just go through some of the actual references they make in regards to the ending. So here is, I believe it's Druckmann talking here. It was so exciting to finally see these two characters meet and how they're going to interact. Ashley and Laura are really good friends and then they have to fight each other in this really brutal way. So they're referring to Ellie and Abby's voice actresses. That's them fighting each other on that beach. That final moment where you hear Ellie screaming. That's all from the set of these two actors going at it. Yes, that's right. That was a brutal scene to watch, but kind of exciting because it felt like everybody's at the top of their game at that point, giving it their all and pouring their years of work in this moment. That was exciting in a horrific sort of way, but exciting nonetheless. Yeah, it was very exciting, and it all amounted to nothing. All this buildup, all these games that you made, all these deaths that Ellie went to go through. She couldn't pull the trigger. She just couldn't do it because she had a, a weird flashback for two seconds which she probably have had the entire journey, but only we in the audience see it because storytelling. It's like, great. Uh, she had a lack of... If she had brain damage or something, you could have tied that into the whole uh, her being immune, the cordyceps thing. That would have been great. Like, okay, all of a sudden brain damage is cured when I'm strangling the thing I want, and boom. Good memory of Joel. Hey, guess what? Good memory of Joel. That's the thing I love. I'm going to be even more motivated to kill the thing I hate. Wow. Great idea. So here's Johnson, or Ashley Johnson. And she says, this is the voice actor for, for Ellie. I think she realizes quicker than Ellie that the hate has to stop somewhere. And she's referring to Abby. And she's done. When I got to that part of the game, I thought, is she a better person than Ellie? Okay, so if you understand the context of what's been going on with Abby's life, she's got captured by a bunch of slavers. She's strung up and almost crucified. She's emaciated. She's exhausted. And Ellie comes by and cuts her down for whatever reason. With going through Ellie's head, we don't know. And at that point, Ellie's like, we got to fight. We got to do this. And Abby's like, I don't want to do this. She's so tired and exhausted it's not that she realizes something quicker. She doesn't come to a conclusion faster than Ellie does. And if she does, it's not in the narrative. It's not explained. It's not shown. So I don't know what she's talking about here. If you were hung up for I don't know how long to the point where you lost all your massive gains and you're starving and you just want to get the hell out of there, you want to survive. It really clarifies the mind. You don't have any other ideas involved. Maybe you want to get back at your people who captured you. Maybe you know, a little bit of revenge is involved. Sure, maybe. But at that point, she's exhausted. She wants nothing more to get than to get the hell out of there. So I don't think there's any realization that the hate has to stop. And the reason is because Abby doesn't have any hate, aside from her people who captured her. She got her revenge. She's the better person off, at least mentally or emotionally, uh, notwithstanding being nearly crucified, of course. So this whole thing, oh, she's a better person than Ellie. Did you play the game? She killed the things she wants. She got what she wanted, then she slaughtered her way through the Seraphites as well as killing some of her own countrymen in the WLF, trying to save... Lev and trying to save Yar as well. How, how do you measure that morally in a land where there are no laws? It's all gray. Everyone's gray. What does hate mean? She puts a finer point on it. We always try to justify our side of the story. We all do it. Yeah, that's what humans do. We feel like it's the right thing to do when we've been wronged and justice needs to be served. But when does that cycle end? The cycle ends when everyone dies. That's how it works. You kill off everyone involved. The dumb thing about the story 
is Abby's little group of people who wanted to kill Joel suddenly realized, oh, I'm taking on an entire village of people who like Joel. They're going to come after me. I didn't think that far ahead. And that's exactly the plot of The Last of Us 2. Ellie taking revenge and her friends taking revenge on Abby's team. And they do. And this is not some great concept. This is not some wonderful, amazing, oh my God, it's, you're killing them and they're going to kill you. No, 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 no. You kill off everyone if that's what you're so concerned about. Or you run away really, really far, really quickly. So they can't track you down. But apparently, <laughs> America is just a small place, you know, different old states. It's like you can, just, you can just travel anywhere after a good enough time. I feel like that's the whole point of the video game. When does the cycle end? It's really easy. When Ellie kills Abby and Ellie kills Lev. Cycle done. That would have closed the cycle. And maybe it would have been more interesting if he just killed Abby and let Lev live. Maybe. That would be it. You get a, then you get a third game. Then you get a fourth game. More cycles of revenge. Fantastic. Great, great narrative there, Neil. Like many players, myself included, when Johnson got the Santa Barbara portion of the game, she said to herself, no, 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 I don't want to do this. I don't want to fight this person anymore. I've never felt that in a video game. See, this is called boredom. This is called redundant. I don't want to do this. Oh, God, why? The whole game is I don't want to play as Abby. Why am I fighting Ellie? And then you're as Ellie. is like, I don't want to fight Abby. Ah, this, is, this is boring. I'm doing this over it. We're having a second fight. Oh, God, make it stop. People who finish this game get exhausted. It's not fun. It's not, they don't elevate the, the characters. They don't elevate the plot and why they're doing what they're doing. It's painful. It's like, ugh. Is that, is that the experience you want in a survival horror story? Not an... Not a moment of levity or a moment of hope or beauty, which you got in the first game. No, no, no. Just constant, bleak death, murder, and killing. She makes the conscious decision to end at the end of the game. She leaves again. We don't know where, but she leaves that behind. I think the only thing that maybe is hopeful about this journey that she has found her humanity. How, what What humanity? Can you tell me what humanity looks like? Because all I know is that she tried to forgive Joel. That's it. And somehow that juxtaposes between trying to forgive a dead man and absolutely forgiving the person who killed that man. That doesn't make sense. It could make sense. It could be associated and explained, but it wasn't. It's left for you to interpret. You're like, okay, well, I, I don't get this. You're not giving me a clear answer for the actual plot of the frickin' game. You don't do that with stories. You give us a clear goal and a clear reason why you're achieving that goal. And everything was leading up to it, and then they dropped the ball. At the end of the day, that's, what we can, that's all we can hope for, for any of us, hoping that in these situations that we put ourselves in, at the end of the day, we're going to choose humanity and try to do the right thing. You know what's another aspect of humanity? Getting your due, getting your comeuppance, that's what revenge is. That's an aspect of humanity. It doesn't have to end in bloody murder, but in the world which they gave us, which there is no law, and the story that we were given from Ellie and her reasons and motivations were bloody murder. You did something wrong, you're going to pay the price. That's called justice. That is called doing the right thing. Maybe not today in our society. Justice does not have that shape and form. But in the world of The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2, that's exactly what it was. And you denied that justice and you denied that humanity from Ellie. I mean, it's pretty obvious what the story was about, at least on Ellie's side. Not sure exactly what was going with Abby's side, aside from saving a bunch of kids randomly. That's not very strong storytelling. Very clear storytelling with Ellie until she drops the ball at the end for some reason. She had, she had a thought. She had a vision. <laughs> a flashback. <laughs> That's the, hor the, most wor the worst use of a flashback. It's like, let's stop the plot because I remember a happy memory. Like, what? 
<laughs> do you have brain damage? Did, did you have a lobotomy? Like what happened? Obviously I took a journey. What journey was Ellie on? What character growth? Tell me. Of doing very terrible things for her to get there. Yes, she murdered hundreds of people, if not thousands. But I think that for me, that was the only thing that was hopeful. It's sad. She lost a lot. And it took a lot for her to realize that. It took her a lot to realize that revenge is bad. How many, you know, how many necks did she have to shiv to figure that out? Because she, she certainly didn't figure that out at the end. She just dropped the ball. It doesn't make sense. Again, she could have wanted to bake a cake. And then she was like 99% baking it. And she says, freaking hell, I hate cake. What am I doing? Why did I do this? And she lets the cake burn in the oven or whatever. Like that would be it. They'd be like, what? <laughs> all this story, all this time, you didn't like cake? Okay. I mean, that's, that's one argument. Here, here's some more. Joel didn't know that taking that action in the hospital would lead to his demise. It did. Likewise, Abby didn't know that sparing Ellie in the theater will eventually lead to her survival. If Abby didn't spare Ellie and just went to Santa Barbara with Lev, she would be dead, and she would be dead on that post. Not art, not necessarily. Maybe some of her friends from from her group, from Ellie's group of of Johnston, or sorry, whatever village she was part of, would go hunt down Abby and her friends. But that doesn't necessarily mean they'd all be dead. Marcel, or sorry, Manuel would probably be killed, but probably not her other close group of friends like Mel. So, well, you could argue that Mel was a friend. So no, she probably wouldn't have been alone when she went to Santa Barbara. That whole scenario might not have even happened if she actually just killed Ellie. But it took Owen, your the friend she actually loved, to stop all of her other friends to prevent them from killing Ellie. You see how this works? She didn't just, just take on Joel and Tommy. She took on an entire town and didn't realize, oh, they're going to come hunting for us. Like we went hunting for them. Like she didn't, she didn't put two and two together. Like, wait a second, if I'm doing this, they might come after me. What's my plan for that? Didn't think that far ahead. There's something kind of poetic about that. Yeah. It's sad and stupid poetry. I'm going to kill you. You're going to kill me and all my family. That's great. Somehow something good came out of at the end. What good came out of it? She didn't get what she wanted, but Abby did. You know, murder and, and revenge for Abby is good. Murder and revenge for Ellie is bad. But Ellie learned not to, not to take revenge. And that's a good thing. How is that a good thing? How do you know that in The Last of Us Part 3, Ellie's going to go after Abby again? How do you know that's not going to happen? Because again, she could have another flashback where she learns that revenge is good. And that could just, that could be a thing. You know, how many, how many more ass pulls do we need? Is it going to be a dream? Is she going to have a dream sequence this time? Is she going to have a, a violent flashback? Is she going to have a... a, a Maybe she's going to have a, a sleep a walk. She's going to be sleepwalking. And she's going to be like, oh, i got to go kill Joe's killer. Lots of things could happen when you use your brain to randomly invent crap. And that's what happens in stories too often by bad writers. Well, here's Gross. So here's the, the second writer for the game. Lev and Abby, in the true Night Dog way of not, telling, of not spelling it out, maybe they've arrived in Catalina Maybe they found the fireflies. Maybe they found continuity in home. No, there's no, there's absolutely nothing referencing that. They don't, we just see them go off into the mist in the boat. There's no, there's no indication of that. We have no idea. In a version of community in, ho in home that is more stable than what they've experienced in Seattle and more akin to what Abby experienced at the hospital. I think that's the hope. That's, that's really interpreting the ending. That's really stretching but also leaving some mystery. It just ends with them going into the mist. We don't know what, what happened. You're really, re you're reaching there, gross. But we also don't know who the fireflies are now. We don't know what their focus is on. 
Is it still finding a cure or have they moved on? And why Catalina? I don't know. You guys wrote the freaking story that way. Why are you asking us? <laughs> why? Why did we do this? What are they up to? We don't know. It's like, yeah, that, that's done. The story's over at that point. Great, great denouement. Traditional Hollywood stories have taught us to look for closure, to answer that. What is the end? Who wins? Is there a cure? Yes, but that's not just Hollywood. That's stories in general. And even if you have closure, you still leave questions open if you want. That could have still happened. If Ellie got her revenge, what does she do? Exactly the same series of questions. What does Ellie do now? Where is she going? What's she going to do? How is that going to work? You see that? You still give her what she needs, you give a fulfilling ending, and you still have open-ended questions. The Seraphites, and, and, and that's not life. Why are you telling a story about life? Why does a story have to be... That's a stupid thing to say. It's not realistic enough. It's not, is it believable? That's the main question. That's, just, that's all a story has to be, is, is it believable? Do I, does it make sense that the character is doing what they, they're doing? And it doesn't make sense in the ending of The Last of Us 2. The Seraphites and the Double F kind of wipe each other out in the final fight at the, on the island. We don't know. I'm sure there'll be survivors, but it's not going to be the groups they were before. Jackson, for now, is fine. But who knows what will happen in the future? Uh, sure. The Fireflies are trying to regroup. Abby and Lev might reconnect with them. Sure, but we don't know what's going to happen. Ellie's going to go off on her own. How do you know that? How do you know Ellie just doesn't go back to... To Johnston, or sorry, Jackson. She just goes off into the forest, or the the exit of her of her farm. Why wouldn't she go back to Jackson? Why not? Seems logical to me. Would she just wander the wilderness like in Fallout. Just I'm going to wander the wilderness. <laughs> Is she going to be okay? Is she going to find happiness? Is she going back to Dina? I don't know. That's kind of like life. Oh, God, here we go. The story is like life. The ending reminds me of my own life. It's like, no, stop it. And you know, is all you know is what happens now and not what happens in the future. Yes, thank you. Thank you, writer. We know how books work. Every group is going to try and do their best to survive, and some are surviving longer than others, but okay, yeah. And she keeps going. The hope that we see in this game is largely from investing. Investing in relationships. Tell me, what relationships were invested in? The majority of people die. The one that we know of, Ellie, is broken. Tommy is, I guess, some sort of relationship. He, he also got revenge if... if uh, actually, no. <laughs> He's going to be pissed. <laughs> Tommy's going to be pissed that uh, Ellie didn't kill Abby. He lost his relationship with his wife because of what he went through. Everyone's broken and alone. That's not hope. That's the opposite of hope. <laughs> investing in community, investing in security, safety, happiness, arts, arts. What, what are you talking about? Like music? Bringing productivity. Well, I guess there's no art because Ellie can't play the, mu the guitar anymore. Bringing productivity and positivity to the world. We see that when Ellie and Dina build their farm, and then you take it away from her. We see that when all the members of Jackson are contributing to helping the town. We see that with Joel investing in Ellie and trying to make her happy by taking her to the museum. Okay, yeah. But then you take that hope away. Your story is bleak and black. There is no hope. Ellie walking away is empty. Where does she, Where is she going? What is she going to do? I don't know. We leave you with these questions. Well, she's a broken and lonely person. The logical conclusion would be she should go back to Jackson. At least Tommy's still alive. That's all you get. Druckman weighs in on what he hopes people to get out of the experience once they're done with the game. I hope it sticks with them. Yes, it sticks with us. It's a horrible story. I hope it was challenging and interesting. Oh, here we go. I hope it was, there was enough conflict to be interested in the story. Okay. The worst thing that could happen in my eyes would be like, yeah, okay, that was it. What else do you want us to take from it? Stuff happened. Ellie went home. She has nothing left. She lost some fingers. 
and just move on and never discuss it again. Oh, believe me, we're not moving on. We're going to talk about this because it's so bad. And as a lesson for other writers, other gamers, other game makers to say, don't do it this way. Don't piss off and waste your audience's time. Learn to write. Learn to have consistent characters who know what they want and why they want it. And don't screw up their story or screw up their lives by getting to the 99th step and just going, oh, I don't want to go up any further for some flashback reason, which I'm not going to tell you why. I'm just going to show you the flashbacks so that you could interpret it. For me, the ideas behind it are stuff I've wrestled with a really long time for years, and I still wrestle with them. Hey, Neil, if you've got problems, don't put them into a story you don't understand. That's not what's... You don't do that with stories. You are here to tell a story with meaning. You're supposed to give us an answer that makes sense. You don't just go, well, I don't know. Therefore, Ellie doesn't know. That's not good writing. You do not come to your conclusion and go, huh? That's not how it works. You don't want to tell a story where there is no meaning. You want to provide an answer, a good answer. Maybe not the best answer, but an answer that makes sense. Joel killing people in the hospital to save Ellie is not a good answer, but it makes sense for his character. We get it. We go, oh, that's Joel. Joel would do that. He's being treated like crap. They're stealing his daughter again. Boom. No, not, not in this lifetime. Makes sense. Ellie not killing Abby doesn't make sense. Having a bullshit reason, like a flashback of the thing, of the whole purpose, why she's doing this, would cause her to, con to keep killing Abby, to keep motivating her, but does the exact opposite. Ah, he also could, here we go. The whole thing with this game is, how can you think about the other side? Well, you showed us the other side, and you made us play as this character we didn't like. How can I put myself in this other person's shoes and try to understand their point of view? Well, that's... I don't think you really made us understand their point of view outside of just showing us them. Because once Abby gets her revenge, she's happy. She's done. Yeah, she has some weird dreams, but then her dreams get better. So she's resolved herself of whatever horror she went through. It really kind of calmed me down to say it happened... And come to acceptance of that. I, I don't... What are you talking about? It really helped me forget about the person who did that. You're trying to tell me you forgot why Abby did what she did because you played as her? What? I don't... <laughs> but then you play as Ellie. And then it's like, oh, I gotta go kill Abby. They're like, oh yeah, right. Are, are you ignorant or are you forgetful? Which one is it? If someone else can have that feeling about something, whether it's like they have their, a fight with someone politically on Twitter. Wait, wait, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are we comparing this game to fighting on Twitter? I guess because that's what you've done in your life and it's so memorable to you and they've had such good arguments that you've almost changed your mind. <laughs> and they say really horrible things. Yeah, like you're an idiot and here's, here's a proof why. Like you're a horrible writer, here's a reason why. But they're able to let it go and move on or just say, I might disagree with it, but I get the other side. That to me would be the greatest compliment if someone told me that's what they look took away from the game. I really, okay. If people think this way, that's good. They, they understand someone else's side. That's great. The difference is, if someone came by and murdered your family or your father figure or whomever, but you understood why they did it. That's nice. That's nice. To, oh, I know why you did it. Guess what? I still want you dead. It's nice to understand the other side of an argument. It's great. But if they murder your family, guess what? It doesn't change the fact they murdered your family. Do not tell unfulfilling stories. No one's going to want to read your crap. This, this is, here, here's Troy Baker. Here we go. 
I try to think of a better word, but the word I keep coming back to is a story of redemption. There is no redemptive story here, Troy. It's not there. Not on Abby, not on Ellie. It's not a story of redemption. If it was a story of redemption, guess what? Abby and Ellie would feel like they needed to redeem themselves. There would be an actual reason why. We get the sense of guilt from Abby because she tells us, she doesn't show, she just tells us, I feel guilt. Why? I have to lighten the load. Why? What are you lighting your load for? What load? What are you, what's the problem? We don't know. She doesn't show or tell us why. All we know is that she gets better because she helps, I guess, Lev and Yara. And somehow that has to do with her dad. We don't know why. The whole point of her story was to kill Joel. She got it. Her story is done at that point. And then we have to invent a new story for her. And it never happens. She just meanders around. She faffs about, let's go save some kids. Let's go save some kids again. Let's go save Lev. That's her story. There's no central through line. She just bounces around to plot points. But here, here's Troy trying to explain that. I guess, I, I guess that's what she's talking about. Because unilaterally across every character I can see, that is a commonality of every character just wanting redemption. How do you, where? Show us every character. Jesse wanting redemption? Dina wanting redemption? Who, which ones? Owen? Does Owen want redemption? I don't know. How about Mel? How about Marcel? Or Manuel, whatever his name is. I don't even care about these guys anymore. Who wants, show us this redemption, Troy. It's not about revenge. Yes, it is. The whole story of Ellie is about revenge. The whole story about Abby, I think, is about the after effects of revenge. If we can call that even a story. That's just, that's just a slice of life. Stuff happens. What'd you do? I killed someone. Okay. How do you feel? I feel X. And then I made a sandwich. Or I ate a burrito. That's it. And then, then stuff happens. Revenge is a very short wick, and everybody just wants to feel like they can be redeemed. What? Revenge is a very short wick, and everybody just wants to feel like they can be redeemed. What? What is this? How does redemption come from revenge? Once you get revenge, you feel good. You got what you wanted. Like, yes. It's accomplished. I did the thing I set out to do. Blood for blood. But why do you want to be redeemed over that? Why, why would you? You are the one who is seeking revenge. You have to balance the scales. You need to. Th you need things to make sense in your life, and getting revenge is that what it's all about. You can feel bad after that, sure, but we don't know what Abby feels. So ultimately, I say the Last of Us is a story about redemption. Ah, you know, I'm sorry, but Troy, there is no story of redemption. You can make the argument that Abby feels guilty, but we don't know why. That's not a story. That's an inkling of a feeling. I feel guilty. Why? I want to lighten the load. Why? What did you do that made you feel guilty? Is it because of your act of killing Joel that got your friends killed? Maybe. Is it because you slept with Owen? Maybe. Give us a reason, a clear reason why you're doing all this other unrelated crap. If you don't connect those two dots, we don't know what's going through your head. We don't know why you're doing the things you're doing. If not, then you're just, you're just bouncing around. I'm gonna save some kids now. I'm gonna sleep with Owen. I'm gonna argue with Mel. I'm gonna save Yara now. I'm gonna go after Lev again. What? what? What is? That's not a story. You may as well be saying, I feel like drinking water. Now I feel like drinking beer. Now I'm going to get some wine. It's just, you're bouncing around. Why? Anyway, this was a, a bunch of interpretive nonsense from uh, a podcast of a bunch of people rambling. Actual writers, actual actors, actors aren't very helpful. Uh, yeah, they can know their character a bit more, a bit better. They have their own spin on their character. That's, that's true. But it's really about the writers and these guys, 
Druckmann doesn't even know what he's talking about. He's, he has this idea he's wrestling with. He still wrestles with. It's like, dude, this is not the basis for a story. You could have that as a as a subplot. You could have a counter or, or a sub-motivation why a character is acting the way they're acting, but you don't make the whole goddamn story about that eye for an eye shit if you don't know what it means to you. If you don't give us a definitive, clear reason. That's not why we read stories. We read stories to get answers. Say, oh, this is the right way to behave. Oh, this is what they wanted all this time. That's why we read stories, for meaning, not to have no meaning. And then Troy to say, well, it's really a story about redemption because, you know, everyone wants it. No, Troy, that doesn't happen in the story. Anyway, thanks for listening, folks. Hope you're having a good day.